This is Mark from LaurelHollowPark.net again, and today we're going to look at shapes made by Homer Lachlan from 1913 to the late 1920s. Before we get into that, I need to talk about the last video that I did on the fancy embossed shapes. And one of the shapes was the Hudson shape, and it had the treatment H135, this almond blossom decal. And I said that it appeared on Virginia Rose as, I think I said VR104. Well, here's an actual Virginia Rose casserole with the treatment. This Virginia Rose covered dish. And it is VR119. So I wanted to make that <coughs> quick correction. But it's interesting to see this decal that was introduced in 1907 on a piece made in 19, actually 1933, I believe, is the back stamp. Yep, 1933. So this treatment actually <coughs> had a pretty long life. So now we can get into our uh, our shapes from 1913 to 1925 actually we're going to start with Empress which is 1913 a plain round shape uh, this shape there are several potteries that made shapes similar to this one uh, Harker made a shape similar to it uh, Steubenville made one that was almost identical to it and uh, the next one is from 1914 it's Republic this is a copy of Haviland's Ransom shape Harvey Duke, in his 8th edition book of Pottery and Porcelain, talks a little bit about this, where many potteries were copying this uh, French shape, Ransom. And um, T.S. and T, Taylor and Taylor, had the Avona shape. W.S. George had the Radisson shape. And um, even Edwin M. Knowles, I think theirs was called Monterey. But for Homer Lachlan, it was Republic. And this was one of Homer Lachlan's longest-running shapes. It lasted well into the 1960s. In fact, some of these pieces you see here are, are come well after 1914. This apple blossom treatment on the creamer comes from 1950. Uh, the Susan treatment, which was made from Montgomery Wards, comes from 1947. The Priscilla treatment, actually, that's dated 1948. So this is a, a very popular uh, shape for Homer Lachlan, the Republic shape. Next is the Quaker shape that was introduced in 1920. Uh, plain round shape, flat top finials and flat top handles. Uh, most of the treatments developed for Quaker are going to be very similar to this with these uh, elaborate border decals. And since it shares its flatware with Empress, a lot of those border decals made their way onto Empress as well. In fact, this sugar has a Quaker treatment on it. And not only that, but it has a Quaker treatment number, K3115 on it. So Quaker and Empress share a lot of treatments besides sharing flatware. And when I say flatware, I'm talking about plates, platters, bowls, bakers, saucers. Um, the next one's Yellowstone from 1925. This is an octagon shape. Um, when I talk about these four shapes, sometimes I'll call, the, call them the pre-read shapes. And that is that they were introduced before Frederick Reed came to Homer Lachlan in 1927 but were continued to be produced long after he died in 1942. And with respect to Yellowstone, he probably did more with Yellowstone than the other shapes. In fact, one of the things he did was redesign the sugar and casserole. The early casserole, you can see the lid has this little inside lip for the lid to fit onto. And then the redesigned version, we get rid of that inner lip and the lid overhangs. So Reed had more to do with Yellowstone than the other the other shapes, though he did work with all of these. In particular, the Empress teapot we have in this art glaze, this blue art glaze, and it's going to be marked Wells art glaze. We'll get into that in the next video when we start talking about the Reed shapes. That glaze is actually identical to what was used on the apple tree bowls, this blue-green glaze. So those are our four shapes. Um, again, Empress, Republic, Quaker and Yellowstone. And it's interesting, when we looked at the fancy embossed shapes, there was one right after another in succession. In fact, in a 12-year span, or, or roughly a 10-year span, there were eight different shapes. But this represents a 12-year span, and there's only four. Now, when Empress was introduced, um, nothing was discontinued as far as an, an older shape. And so, when, at the time of Empress, there was the Angelus, Hudson, Genesee, and Empress. When Republic was introduced, Genesee was finally discontinued, and you have the Angelus, Hudson, Empress, and Republic. When Quaker was introduced, Angelus was finally discontinued, and you have Hudson, Empress, Republic, and Quaker. 
And then when Yellowstone was introduced, nothing was discontinued. And you have basically the four shapes here in addition to Hudson. So at any given time, there were only four shapes, except with Yellowstone when you have Hudson lingering on. So there was a simplification of design. There was a simplification of the number of shapes. Um, we're now going to look at the assortments. So I'm going to take pages from a 1929 catalog. I'm going to put them out here so we can look at these. And what we're going to see is a simplification of the assortments and how things were cut back dramatically. Because with the Hudson shape, which was in 1907, there were almost 90 some pieces, almost 100 actually. But by the time we get to Yellowstone in 1925, um, it's, it's reduced to about half of that. But the progression starts in Empress, this downward progression. Uh, the, this catalog page, it shows the oyster terrine, it shows the covered casserole, covered dish, and sauce terrine. When we go to Republic, we have those same shapes. Oyster terrine, covered dish, casserole, and sauce terrine. When we get to Quaker, however, we have the covered casserole, we have the covered dish. The two terrines are gone. And then when we get to Yellowstone, it's just the casserole. So we have this discontinuation of all these extra pieces. Empress also has, which I, I don't quite understand why, it's one of the only shapes that has this, the handled uh, gravy fast stand and the unhandled gravy fast stand. All the other lines that are around it just have one version. Empress also has this ramekin and liner, uh, which is an unusual piece. It's pretty unique to Empress. Uh, KT and K made one very similar. I actually have one out. This is the ramekin and liner. That's the chateau pattern that was made for Butler, Butler Brothers. Excuse me. Has a drive bottom on the ramekin, and then the saucer is going to be marked, or the liner, I should say. Um, Empress also had a spoon holder. It's the last Homer Lachlan line to have a spoon holder, which is this item right here. Uh, when we get to Republic, actually, I have one more other thing I want to say about uh, Empress. We have a butter pat and a bone dish. And then in Republic, we have a butter pat and a bone dish. And then in Quaker, they're gone. And then no other line after that has them. So again, we, we see this reduction in items. Uh, when it comes to flatware, we have multiple sizes of nappies and bakers and platters. Once we get to uh, Yellowstone, there's not nearly as many. They're about cut in half. Now, one other thing I want to talk about assortments, and this is with respect to Quaker. Because Quaker has two unusual pieces. Once they got rid of the terrines, uh, they substituted these odd so um, salad dishes. We have number 21, which is the handled salad, and number 23 on this brochure, which shows the covered salad nappy. Uh, Quaker is the only Homer Lachlan line to really have these two pieces. And this is an example of the handled salad nappy. And this is an example of the covered salad nappy. I should point out that the Virginia Rose shape actually had um, a handled salad nappy modeled for it, but it didn't go into production. Maybe I'll show that later. Uh, one of those experimentals. So the next thing I want to talk about are kilns. Because in 19, let's see, 1914 when Republic came out, plant number five was built. And num 19, let's see, 1923, which would be in between Quaker and Yellowstone, uh, plant number six was built. And plant number six had a continuous tunnel kiln, which was a big change from the upright bottle kilns. So I'm going to try the best I can to explain bottle kilns. I've got a couple postcards here we'll look at. Let's move some things. Here's the Homer Lachlan China Company. Actually, many of you have been there. This is actually the main entrance for the... Uh, the offices and this is plant number four and these are the bottle kilns if you go there you will still see the remnants of this structure but you will not see the bottle kilns there anymore this is the Edwin M. Knowles China Company as it looked about 1915 or so uh, plant number five of Homer Lachlan will be back in this area and you see all the bottle kilns at Edwin M. Knowles this is the Ohio China Company and we see more bottle kilns so that's why they're called bottle kilns because they look like bottles they're technically called 
periodic uh, kilns. And this is a picture, or artist rendering, of the inside showing the bases of the bottle kilns. And this is essentially how it worked. These workers have saggers, and each one of these saggers has tiers inside of plates or platters or whatever needs to be fired. And what they're doing, they have to cover the saggers up, and this man with his arms outstretched is inside the base of a bottle kiln. And they're loading up the kiln, and they will fill that up as much as they can, and then they will brick the entrance shut and seal it. And I don't know if you can see on, on this picture, but there's a little door right there. That's where it would be coal fired. And they would get it up to temperature. Um, and then once it was up to temperature, then it was, it was turned off. Uh, or the fire was put out. They would tear down the little brick wall, and then they would unload the kiln. Now, if all went according to plan, they would have usable, sellable ware. Uh, and this is why they were called periodic kilns, because you had to go through this process each and every time. Now, the more bottle kilns a pottery had, the more it could produce. When Plant 6 was built at Homer Lachlan, it, um, it had a continuous tunnel kiln, which was new technology at the time. Now, I'm going to put this camera down for a second so I can get my little blueprint out. Okay, so now this is a blueprint, one of the blueprints, and this is for the Homer Lachlan China Company number 8. Even though this is plant 8, the idea is the same for what was built in plant 6. New West Virginia, it's dated March 19th, 1929. And this is a cross section showing the entrance, and what you see here is stackable wares on a little train track that would enter into the continuous tunnel kiln. Now, this is essentially how it worked. We've got a bisque kiln here. This is where the wares would be glazed and then ready for firing. It would enter on this side. And it would go through what's called the preheating zone. Because in the center is where you have the firing zone. So everything's getting sort of heated as it comes, comes along the tracks. By the way, the overall dimension on this is 355 feet. And the preheating zone is 148 feet. Once it gets towards the center, it's 62 feet of firing zone. So all this wear is just traveling through on its little train track. And then once it gets through the firing zone, then we go through the cooling zone, which is 105 feet. And it, it says slow cooling zone, so it slows down once it gets here. And then once it gets to the end, there's, it says rapid cooling fan. And then the wear is going to be unloaded. And then we have these two tracks at the bottom, which are called the return tracks. And then you, the ware is loaded up, and then it goes through again. And you just go through this cycle over and over. So instead of going through these very cumbersome bottle kilns where you're having to tear things down and put things back up together and everything, you can just have wares going through this tunnel kiln, and your output is going to be significantly larger. We also have, there were two gloss uh, tunnel kilns in plant number eight. They're much shorter, however. But again, here's the cross-section of what it would look like at, you know, looking down the tunnel as the wear is making its way down there. And after plant six got their tunnel kiln, um, they went to plant four, which had those bottle kilns we saw in the postcard, and actually retrofitted it with tunnel kilns. And then, of course, plant number seven in 1927 had tunnel kilns, and plant number eight did as well, as we saw in the blueprint. Um, so these shapes represent a time period when production was undergoing a lot of change. Um, any pottery that did not convert to a tunnel kiln was doomed, especially with the Great De Depression on the horizon. So I just wanted to mention that about uh, how production methods changed during this time period of these four shapes. I guess the only thing else to add, uh, I guess we can talk about the markings real quick. Um, the early shapes I'm sorry, the early markings for Empress, Republic, and Quaker will have the shape name in them. I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, let's see. Nope. Let's look at this. This oyster terrain. Nope. Yes. Actually, it does. Okay. 
So there you see the Homer Lachlan back stamp with Empress in the back stamp. And then Republic. We have Republic's name in the back stamp. And Quaker. Let's look at this. Salad nappy. Nope. Yep. Okay, there's Quaker in the back stamp. Now once you get to Yellowstone, that trend stops. And you just have the general Homer Lachlan back stamp. You will not find Quaker's name in any of the markings. Let's find a clear marking. Oh, that's kind of faded. I could have planned this out. There we go. That's 1926 marking, made in the USA. But there's no Quaker in the name. Um, I'm sorry, no Yellowstone in the name. And what happens is, in this time period, they go back to the other shapes and start removing the uh, shape names and the generic Homer Lachlan back stamp is born. So that's about 1920s, 21 or so that that happens. So that's it for now. Um, yeah, the, these plain shapes of the, of the 19 teens and 1920s, uh, again, they're Empress from 1913, Republic from 1914, Quaker from 1920, and Yellowstone from 1925. Um, next video, we'll start looking at the reed shapes. We'll start with uh, an old trellis, an old Roman, and go from there. That's going to be it. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay at home, and uh, hope you like the video.